Fragrances are a fantastic way of tapping into different sides of yourself and in the month of November I wanted a kind of perfume grab bag that would allow me to accessorize different parts of my personality regardless of the situation. So I picked fragrances that played off one another in the month of November and I want to share with you some of my more successful picks for that month. Now remember it was a month that was pretty cold, pretty icy out and I wanted fragrances that sort of matched the coziness I wanted to feel but also the sometimes freshness that was required. So let's get into my fragrances for the month of November that gave me different options, different personalities, different vibes regardless of the situation. Let's get into it. Hi, I'm Janique and November was a pretty successful month for me because I wanted to reach for fragrances I don't typically reach for in the winter time because they might be fresher or airier than I typically go for. But I was kind of over the heavy fragrances from October when I wanted warm, cozy, fuzzy and yummy and I wanted something a little bit cleaner in the month of November. And so those are the fragrances I'm going to share with you today that span the very many scenarios that I got myself into, whether it was daytime fragrances, playtime fragrances, nighttime fragrances, or worktime fragrances. They're all in here. So if that sounds like something you'd be interested in, stick around and we'll get into it. Also, if you like this kind of video, you would love a perfume review, then don't forget to subscribe. I would really appreciate it and you would be awesome for doing so. If you're already subscribed, thank you so, so much. I appreciate you. You are a real one. Now let's get into it. Let's start off with my daytime fragrances for the month, the winners, the loves, because, you know, daytime fragrances are some of my favorites because they feel like me, just perfumey. And I have two daytime fragrances. One is Banana Republic's Tobacco and Tonka Bean, and the other is Belle de Nuit from Fragonard. Yes, it says Nuit, meaning night, but I wear it in the daytime and we're going to get into it. So this is a more gourmand, um, tobacco heavy fragrance with a lot of Tonka, and this is a far more floral fragrance let's start off with this one though no you would think from the name that this was a super heavy fragrance that would not really work for the daytime but it isn't it is yes coconut vanilla tonka bean there is tobacco in here but the tobacco in this is incredibly light it is a barely there tobacco it's like tobacco down the street around the corner and you're sort of getting a slight whiff of it it smells very daytime especially if there are smokers in the air now the tonka in here is texturally very 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 light a very very light take on tonka that for nighttime would not be acceptable but for a day it gives me an opportunity to wear tonka on my body without feeling overwhelmed by it the most surprising thing about this fragrance though is that it has a sharp citrusness in the opening all the way through to, through to the mid um, and I don't know what that comes from. So you might not expect a heavy citrus in a fragrance called Tobacco and Tonka Bean but there absolutely is in this fragrance and it helps to lighten the fragrance and make it feel more daytime and less heavy. Now hear me out, this fragrance does not stick around for a long time. The longevity at, as it is right now anyway is maybe three to four hours. So you're wearing this to run errands, you're wearing this to go to the grocery store, you're wearing this to go to Starbucks. Like that is the purpose of this fragrance. Now, Belle de Nuit is usually more of a nighttime fragrance. It is a lovely floral fragrance that mixes together yellow florals like Alang Alang and things like plum. The real star in this fragrance has to be the gardenia, and I love me some white florals. I love me some gardenia. It's not tuberose, but gardenia is really high up there when it comes to notes for me. Anyway, this fragrance claims to be a nighttime fragrance, but for me, it's more suited for daytime because it is this really light and lovely, almost barely there fragrance that feels incredibly flirtatious is that why it's a nighttime fragrance i don't know it is a very flirtatious fragrance you know that kind of flirtation where you're kind of locking eyes with somebody and you hold it for like two to three seconds too long and then you cast your eyes down 
were you flirting were you not were you just lingering out of you know your mind wandering you don't know it is kind of like that the vibe of this fragrance so you start off and you have these really delicate light floral notes these purple florals like violet that don't feel powdery they feel more airy and light and subtle and there is this sort of floral subtle sweetness they say there's plum there's no plum i don't know where they get plum from i don't get any dark fruit in here this is really subtle light floral sweetness to it that is there but not there and then as it as it settles on the skin and it starts to wind down a bit and become more of a skin scent the gardenia sort of amps up and amps up and it becomes sweeter and more indolic as it settles and as it dries down it like it, it amplifies over time and i think that makes it incredibly flirtatious and sexy to me but it never really screams it's so my work time fragrances the opposites i pull together for the month of november that really won me over were these two here the first one is letta's 22 auras a very earthy irisy type of powdery fragrance that is incredibly soft and beautiful as well as burberry weekend which is a far fresher floral fragrance that gives everything that needs to be gave and then some let's go through both of these fragrances because i think they're both winners one more affordable than the other but either of these is a fantastic get because i think if you're looking for a work fragrance that won't be offensive but will make you feel good i think these both really work so let's talk through 22 auras no Oris, basically iris, is a more bittery, powdery, or earthier powdery note than iris usually gives. But if you love your purple florals and the powderiness and the airiness they usually come with, this is a fantastic one. Now, this starts off with a nice, fresh, happy burst of citrus. I think maybe bergamot is in here or grapefruit, something like that, that really is cutting and crisp. And when you first spray it, you get this really like blast of happiness, like in the morning as you're heading to work and you're like, yes, thank you, right? And then comes in this Oris note, which tends to be an earthier version of Iris, sometimes not quite as powdery, but sometimes it is. And in this one, it's not a powder bomb like you sometimes get from Iris, it's closer to a violet where it's more airy, it's lightly powdery, it smells fresh, it smells slightly sweet, it is beautiful. As the fragrance develops, you get this marshmallow note that doesn't smell so much like the marshmallow you bite into as the sort of powder on the outside of the marshmallow that you sort of smell in, sort of powderiness and real sweetness to it without heading too far gourmand. It is very clearly a sort of earthy, sometimes citrus uh, sort of floral fragrance that is really beautiful and sprinkled over top is this powder type of sugar that makes it feel really feminine and soft and sweet and really beautiful. Now, I do like to support a smaller brand and Leda is definitely that. They, I think, make two fragrances, you know, in general. And very often you can get their fragrances at a kind of a discount. They'll maybe do 10%, 20% off at different times. I managed to pick mine up at like 20% off and that's in the like hundred dollar range like 105 106 I don't remember so super affordable for a small batch company and I'm really excited that like it smells so beautiful and lovely soft feminine works for closed office situations where somebody might be a bit of a complainer and don't want anybody to wear fragrance this plays well with other people's sensibilities without sort of being boring you know we don't want to be boring but we want to you know be nice to our colleagues you know what it is anyway now burberry weekend is an oldie but goodie i love my burberry fragrance a lot of them skew sheep rub or fresher citrusy fragrances smell a little bit cleaner i feel like a lot of like english perfume brands give that kind of vibe like pen halligans but whatever so burberry weekend boom nice this is a very similar i want to say this is a violet fragrance so very similar in terms of the base of the fragrances being really airy now this is not as powdery as 22 auris it skews cleaner crisper fresher 
and more citrusy there is a pronounced woodiness in here at the base of this fragrance and a nice musk that gives it some staying power but mostly what you're getting here are fresh beautiful smells that just smell like you but better now a lot of the fragrances that would have been released around this time and i think about Bur burry london as an example and as a fantastic more boss bitch work fragrance this is more of a team player fragrance in a lot of ways i like this but this doesn't have the sort of staying power and longevity as a lot of other burberry fragrances do now this is not a like nine to five fragrance this is a ten to two fragrance you're getting about four hours of the work day but my little baby here which i got on clearance for like 20 bucks is one i can carry around with me and top up at about lunch time right i have no issue with that i have no problem with that but if you do and you want something that's going to carry you through the entire work day without having to respray this ain't the one but if you do see it and you see it on sale you see it on clear on somewhere and you know you like a purple floral something a bit fresher cleaner smells more like a smells more like a skin scent then this might be a fantastic option except except however let's talk there is something kind of vintage smelling about this fragrance like it gives a little bit like elizabeth arden's red door there is something in here there are a lot of notes in here that don't show up in a lot of like contemporary newer fragrances things like sage which is a very um <laughs> aromatic but also oh it's there's something kind of savory about sage sometimes there's blue cyclamen in here as well how many fragrances do you see with blue cyclamen in it none maybe for good reason so it has all of these notes that really aren't used to make fragrances in 2022 10 now and you can sort of smell that sort of throwback quality in this fragrance but it does not have throwback longevity but that's besides the point what i'm saying is if you like a 90s or early 2000s fragrance that kind of quality about it having some of those floral notes that aren't in all the fragrances and you're getting something a little bit different but it's still giving freshness lightness airiness and clean then this is a great one especially if you can get it at a bargain at a discount for less than 30 40 dollars then it is definitely a bargain so i love me some burberry weekend this little tiny baby here that i'll continue to wear and enjoy and if you're looking for something a little bit fresher this is it also because i don't do a lot of fresh fragrances like this is as fresh as it really gets with me and it's still incredibly floral let's move on the vibe i wanted to go for for nighttime slash playtime slash road time was very different i wanted to give something a little bit sexier and sensual like girl on la petite rob noir beautiful cherry fragrance but i also wanted to do something a little bit more brash brazen out there a little bit more assertive in the form of zara for him red here's the thing you need to be checking out the for him section when you go to zara if you are looking for beautifully performing fragrances because a lot of times the men's fragrances perform better and they work beautifully for women as well i'm just saying we're going to talk about both so let's start off with the girl on fragrance no here's the thing this is supposed to be a cherry fragrance cherry and iris together i am all here for it. cherry iris and licorice let's get that straight but uh, it gives something a little bit different no the fragrance starts off hot and heavy it's real just in your face really sexy in the sort of sweeter take on cherry it gives now it says it's supposed to be sour cherry it's not sour cherry it's very very sweet cherry but it's really in your face really pronounced and i love that opening note so 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 much it lasts about 30 minutes it disappears real fast and what happens is the licorice comes in some spiciness comes in and an airiness comes from the iris it smells more like violet than iris in this because we don't get any kind of powderiness at all now this fragrance people tend to hate it i don't know why because i think it's a lovely one i think cherry can be a kind of controversial note that isn't for everybody and this is a pretty classic take in a lot of ways on cherry minus the tonka which cherry usually comes with it's a really sort of sweet 
and airy almost powdery fragrance with these candy smells that is really beautiful the only kind of unfortunate thing about this fragrance is that it disappears real fast like it gives you about three hours or so so you're wearing this out to dinner and drinks when you know you're coming in within three hours or so if you need this to perform longer than that this is not the fragrance to go with but if you're having a quick night out for play then this works really beautifully now the reason is called little black dress so you can put it on with your low black dress and that is a kind of sort of classic sexiness that this is meaning to give you and a lot of ways it really does do that the dry down of this really subtle a little bit spicy really airy with that double dose of licorice from the actual licorice and the anise note come together to create sort of candy sweet but not overly so fragrance that is really really beautiful and i love it now, if you're looking for a more classic take on cherry this doesn't do that but if you are open to all the variations of cherry that might be out there then this gives that and then some and i love that one i mean girl on barely ever disappoints right it's just so good the next up is zara for him red see when i go into zara because i love going into zara for no fucking reason can i fit zara clothes not really no but i go in there anywhere just to walk around because it just makes me feel good i know people talk about zara you know zara being a place where people are kind of snobbish i don't care i love going in there anyway <laughs> just like i went into YSL and walked around like i won the place because why not why not anyway so Zara for him red is supposed to be a dupe of baccarat rouge 5 540 mm, x straight right and y'all know i stay collecting these br540 dupes and i like when i do personally i have the original i wear the original i love her and i do like when the dupes try to do like a spin on br540 versus trying to replicate it perfectly i know that's not everybody's take when it comes to dupes but i do like a little bit of a surprise <laughs> with my dupes and this is a green take on br540 yes right i didn't see that coming as something i'd want but i do like it a lot no it's like cut grass green it starts in the opening and it does not die back and it keeps going till the dry down so if you like br540 and you love an earthy green smell a tea smell like a green tea smell or a cut grass smell or an oak moss smell you like those greener notes and you would enjoy the marriage between the two or you've layered your br540 with a green fragrance before like when the rain stops something like that then you might really enjoy this now br540 x straight is really thick and heavy it leans in heavy to the vanilla to give us something a little bit heavier and stickier creamier even not really creamy but really heavy and really beautiful giving you beautiful longevity on top of everything this is a lot airier a lot lighter just like a lot of zara dupes normally give however maybe because of the greenness in this fragrance maybe for other reasons the longevity on this fragrance is eight to ten hours Hours for me i get so much longevity out of this zara fragrance you would not believe so check this out if you like me love a beast mode type of fragrance this is great for cooler nights out i think because it isn't as heavy as the original i think it reads more unisex than the original does i think it even excuse a little feminine sorry zara but it does i know it's called for him but for her for janique please and thank you i really love this one really affordable beautiful fragrance if you love br540 and you find you know the red temptation and the one for women to be a little bit light for your liking check this out if you love a green scent as much as i do you might really enjoy this as well bedtime the sort of opposites i wanted to go for was really cozy and lovely and something that was sort of a bedtime pick me up that made me feel happy and in a good mood i know you can't get both in one bottle but if you can get two bottles that give you know why not so let's start off with kenzie rosy bloom i may have talked about this before as you can see this is a heavily used fragrance right you can see that like yeah it's it's gotten a lot of wear out on me i love wearing this to bed what does it smell like i don't know what is in here they may have a lot of complicated notes it smells like red kool-aid 
it smells like red kool-aid and you know once it starts to dry down it becomes a little bit more subtle in terms of the candy smell it gives it doesn't like explicitly give red kool-aid anymore but the opening that sort of red kool-aid smell i was like yes thank you why would i want to smell like red kool-aid i have no answers for that question but it is so nice that sort of blast of synthetic cherry meat strawberry what is that type of note that is just so sweet and smells really nostalgic to me and beautiful and i really enjoy this fragrance and as you can see it's gotten a lot of wear out of me because i just find that kind of scent profile that candy sweet fruity candy fruit sort of smell to be really relaxing and beautiful for bedtime the next one I wore decently, yeah, a fair bit of wear out of this one, is Laura Mercier's Ombre Vanille. Ombre Vanille is a little bit of a <laughs> mischaracterization in a lot of ways. It is more coconut vanilla than amber vanilla. Like the, the amber comes through once it dries down, but I must leave by then you know i must leave it's really the coconut and the vanilla that i get throughout much of the wear now the texture of this fragrance is very light i am doing a sephora ranking video next where i bought a bunch of literally 21 fragrances from sephora during the sephora sale do not judge me mm. and i'm going to rank them and sharosa 40 which is an ambery vanilla it's pretty close to this in the dry down and i would say this is texturally very light but that is even more watery i have wonderful things to say about that by the way check out that video when it comes after this one anyways that's, that's why you should subscribe so you should subscribe you don't so you don't miss it when it comes y'all anyway this fragrance is coconut and vanilla for most of the wear right it starts off and you get this mostly gourmand coconut with a slight lotiony smell to it it doesn't it isn't too sweet it's not like a candy sweet coconut but it is sweeter it's beautiful it's really heavy and thick and there's a vanilla in here that skews almost marshmallowy in kind of the vibe that it gives an airiness to the vanilla it is really beautiful and most of the time you're wearing this i would say and it's a better take on vanille coco from come to us to pacific now that reads a lot more desserty but i think the dry down of that the coconut turns into like a suntan lotion coconut which you might like and i don't mind necessarily but this i think expresses those notes a lot better and i find this to just be beautiful for the daytime for bedtime really light beautiful coconut vanilla smells no once you've been wearing this for a while i'd say about three hours maybe four it becomes more ambery on the skin getting a little bit heavier and more pronounced and i think gives just a very different vibe than the opening so if you love a coconut vibe and you can enjoy that for the first three hours and then you'd also love ambery sort of vanillic smells then you get that from the base as well there is this fragrance is simple and perfect in its simplicity it reminds me in some ways to the 22 ores just bring it back to the beginning it reminds me of that the vanilla in here with that sort of marshmallowy sort of quality is very similar to the 22 ores except there is a far more like far more powderiness and there's far more cleanness in this it's a beautiful one and even though you can sometimes find this retail at like i want to say 60 to 70 dollars you can sometimes find it less than that so i think for the price it works as a bedtime scent i really love this i find it really calming and i enjoyed wearing this i also have the vanilla straight vanilla version of this which is more amber vanilla like from the opening it's amber vanilla why wasn't that one called anyway whatever let's go on to my final category which is my travel fragrances which were a vibe this month yeah i had a hard time picking through all the travel sizes i wore in the month of november for my favorite two the two honorable mentions that did not make it into the list this week have to be 
Armani Sea Passione Clad, that sort of fresher, younger black currant meets rose, beautiful fragrance. Also, KL is Musk 12, that did a lot of work, especially for those fragrances that tend to disappear. Looking at you, Barberry Weekend, midway through the day, that needed a little bit of help and a little bit of help to just, you know, last and last. But the two that were actually my favorites for the month of November were doing very different things, but doing them beautifully, and it's these two babies. The first one is is Juicy Couture Gold, Viva La Juicy Gold. We love her. It's a caramel fragrance for the most part. Um, and it's House Bijou from the House of Siage, who obviously I can't afford like four bottles of because the fuck. <laughs> $700 it's insane but this is a beautiful mango fragrances and y'all know how I feel about mango I love them and there aren't enough on the market so let's talk about it let's talk about Viola Juicy Gold because I feel like most of you probably have a sense of this one already it is a mostly caramel fragrance that isn't a perfectly gourmand caramel it's caramel meets white florals like lily of the valley and gardenia making it this really sort of supple beautiful sweeter white floral fragrance that works for whenever wherever it does skew into more of the caramel territory but it isn't your usual sort of sticky caramel that you might expect it's more it's like frozen caramel it's like if you took a piece of caramel and put it in the freezer that sort of smell that would come off of it that sort of colder caramel smell that doesn't feel really warm and enveloping it just sort of smells clean and crisp and airy but very very sweet and a little bit dark from that caramelized sugar where it's been reduced down and turned brown that is what you get here layered over some really softer white florals like light gardenia that comes through more as the fragrance starts to build and it gets to the mid and the base of the fragrance there's a really beautiful take on caramel if you love caramel but just the idea of sweet sugary skin isn't your vibe and you want something that adds dimension and layers to it this is a great fragrance now now I won't go on my rant about how Juicy Couture does have some beautiful fragrances and often gets dismissed the same way a lot of celebrity fragrances do. I think partly because of the price point and the fact that they are a lot more accessible in a lot of ways. But they do have some really beautiful ones like Juicy Couture Gold. I have a full size bottle of this actually and I just carry around the travel size as well because I might need a top up at other times. But it's a beautiful caramel floral fragrance if that is your vibe and you love a floral as much as I do. So let's talk about how House of Siage is House Bijou. Now this is a beautiful fragrance if you like a fruity one because this is mostly a fruity fragrance. There is a bunch of notes listed, especially a lot of florals. I think white florals, purple florals are listed in here, but it's mostly a fruit fragrance. Now it starts off sort of sour right this sort of blast of sourness comes through i think from grapefruit it really smells sparkly and fresh and fun and incredibly beautiful then that mixes together with the mango and we get two parts of the mango we get a more gourmand sweet fuller rounder mango flesh as well as this crisp green mango skin that is a lot lighter and more restrained a few weeks ago i uh, reviewed uh, mango skin from wilhelm which is sort of a similar composition in the fact that it gives us the mango skin plus the mango flesh the greenness in that one is a lot more pronounced and it lasts a lot more throughout the wear of the fragrance. This is more like uh, like a fruit punch or a tropical drink that heavily relies on mango. And there is some like citrus element in the drink, but sort of playing secondary to that sort of heavy mangoey smell. And there is a crisp greenness that also comes through from all of these other tropical notes. But really, what's powering this fragrance is the mango. Like I said, they say there are white florals in here. I don't get any white florals at all. And the only time I really get the purple florals like the iris is in the dry down of this fragrance because as it dries down it gets fresher and fresher and more of that powderiness comes through and so by the time this fragrance is finishing off it's this sort of sweet fresh 
mangoey powdery kind of smell that sits on the skin and just really feels happy and pretty and joyous and i love the tropical vibe of this fragrance because it feels like a vacation and so what is not to love with a mango vacation nothing nothing at all so that's them and i'm holding most of them right now so you can see it wasn't totally out of control last month i did good pulling fragrances that met different briefs for me i wanted cheap shit expensive shit i wanted light i wanted heavy i wanted sexy i wanted assertive i wanted light and airy and fresh but i also wanted a lady like demure and a little bit too powdery i wanted options on options and i got it i pulled it together last month not only relying on my usual vanilla and more fucking vanilla i tried to get fragrances that were different kinds different types different vibes for the month of november because i was feeling all different kinds kinds of ways in that month and i hope there's something in here that is helpful or useful to you if you're looking for the many different types of ways we can wear fragrances in november that aren't all heavy thick and creamy thank you so much for stopping by today and checking out my video i've been gone for a minute i've had the flu y'all it got me the first time since the eighth grade y'all i felt like i lost a battle and you know the flu won anyway i'm back now voice isn't fully there yet but getting there thanks for stopping by spending a little bit of time with me and come back for my next video where i rank sephora fragrances that i bought 21 21 fucking fragrances do i have regrets of course not because regrets are for punks yeah see you in the next one y'all bye I hope I'm not waste my time.